Hello everyone, in this video I am going to talk to you about the payback method. Specifically, I will show you how you can go about calculating the payback and then also shed light on some of the advantages and the disadvantages of using payback method as a way to evaluate investments. So what is the payback method? Well, put very simply, the payback method says figure out how much an investment costs you today and then figure out how long it takes for that project to pay you back or recover your initial investment. It really is as simple as that. So take a look at this example. Let's suppose that there's a project which costs $100,000 upfront today and then it yields cash flows of 20,000, 20,000, 30,000, 30,000 and 30,000 over the next five years. If I ask you how long will it take for this investment to pay you back, you'll say, well, I'm dishing out $100,000 today. By the end of the first year, I'll get $20,000. I'm still $80,000 down, right? Which means that by the end of the second year, when I get another $20,000, now I've recovered $40,000 of the initial investment. I'm still down $60,000, so I still haven't gotten paid back. Okay, then by the end of the third year, if I get $30,000, now I have recovered a total of 20 plus 20, that's 40, plus another 30, that's 70. Still haven't recovered the full 100,000 because I'm still $30,000 down, which means by the end of the fourth year, when I get the final $30,000 here, now I've recovered a total of $100,000. This 100,000 is exactly equal to my initial investment and so the payback period the payback period of this investment is exactly four years and so the payback method to evaluating investments simply says look first calculate your project's actual payback period which in this case we have done that's four years and then compare this to your desired payback period in other words Compare this to the time period by which you actually want your project to pay you back by. In other words, if you are looking at only those investments which will pay you back in three years or less, then this is your desired payback period. This is when you want the project to pay you back by. Now when you calculate your actual payback period and you find that out that that's four years, you'll be like, nah, I don't want to take this investment because it's taking longer than I want it, to, I want it to pay me back by. Now on the other hand, if your desired payback was something like five years, then yes, this investment is worthwhile because it's paying you back in four years and your desired payback of five years says that you're comfortable making any investment which pays you back in five years or less. And so the payback method, the payback method rule is this. Calculate the actual payback period, which is four years, and compare it to your desired payback period. If the actual is more than desired, reject if the actual is less than the desired, accept. So in finance textbooks, these desired paybacks are often uh, written as cutoff points. In other words, these are those points to which you compare your actual payback period to and then go about making your decision. Now, from a calculation perspective, it is often helpful to draw a table which basically uh, sort of expresses this timeline in a different way. So notice I'm representing the time periods here, so 0 to 5, and then the cash flows, negative 100,000 to 30,000. So the first two columns are doing that, but then it's a good idea to introduce another column in this table, which is called accumulated cash flows, which is basically summing up all the cash flows that you are getting during the entire life of the project. So for example, at time period zero, you have basically spent $100,000, so this is a negative. When you get $20,000 by the end of year one, then all I do is simply $20,000 plus this negative 100,000. So I add these two up and so accumulated cash flows is now basically negative eighty thousand dollars so twenty thousand minus the hundred thousand that's negative eighty then i add another twenty thousand that i'm getting by the end of year two which gives me this negative sixty thousand so the idea here is to see how much we are down by 
at different points um, of this project's um, life. And our payback, therefore, is going to happen when we basically move out of the negative, which, as you can see, is exactly happening at the end of year four when our accumulated cash flow has gone to zero exactly. And so this is how uh, you can also see that your payback period uh, of this project is exactly four years. Now, more often than not, you will see projects in which your accumulated cash flows will move from a rather large negative number to a rather large positive number, not zero, right? So this was a rather simple example in the sense that you were getting paid back in exactly four years. So your accumulated cash flows were turning out to be zero in year four. But more often than not, you will see projects of the following type, where let's suppose that in year four, you get not $30,000, but maybe something like $80,000. Now, as you can see, this changes things because when you spend $100,000 up front, and then you get 20 and 20 and 30, you've gotten $70,000, you're still down by 30,000. But when you get $80,000 by the end of year four, then you have crossed the initial 100,000. In fact, you're in the surplus. In fact, if you actually uh, draw this table now in year four, when you get this $80,000, then now your accumulated cash flows have moved from negative 30 to plus $50,000. Now, in this case, if I ask you, what is your payback period? Turns out the answer to that question uh, is, well, it kind of depends. It depends on what you're assuming. If you are assuming that these cash flows are going to come to you lump sum only at year end, in other words, this $30,000 or for that matter, this $80,000 comes in its entirety at the end of the year, this means that there's no action, no cash flow that is coming to you during the entire year, which means then it doesn't really matter whether you get 30,000 or 80,000, your payback period either way is going to be exactly four years because you never get paid back before the exact end of year four. However, in most situations, the simplistic and perhaps more reasonable assumption that we make is that some of these cash flows that you're seeing come to you during the year, which means that if some of this $80,000 is coming to you in the first couple of months, or more specifically, is sort of evenly spread out during this entire year, then you will get paid back somewhat sooner. Why? Because of this $80,000, you only need $30,000, which is really how much you are down by by the end of year three. And so the way you can think about it is this. Notice that you're down by $30,000 by the end of year three. So you're like, okay, I need at least three years to recover my initial investment. I also know that I'm going from negative to a positive during fourth year. So I get paid back sometime between years three and four. How, how many years does it take me specifically? Well, I know that in one year, which is year four, the fourth year, I know in that year, I am getting $80,000, then right, so I'm getting $80,000. The question is, how long, so this is X, how long will it take for me to only get $30,000, which is basically the amount that I need to recover my initial investment. And so if you cross multiply and solve for X, X basically solves out to three over eight, which is 0 0.375 years. And so basically what we're saying is that off the fourth year, we only need to go uh, out about 0.375 years so that the payback period is basically three plus about 0.375 of the fourth year. So the payback period is going to be 3.375 years. And so that is how you can go about calculating the payback period in situations where you're going from accumulated cash flows of negative to positive. The general rule is this. First, figure out the last year in which your accumulated cash flows are negative, which is year three. 
Okay, so done. And then figure out how much you're getting in the year where your accumulated cash flows are going from negative to positive, which is $80,000. And then basically take the amount that you actually need off that cash flow. So basically do three plus the amount that I need, which is 30,000 and the amount that I am actually getting, which is $80,000. And so this is how you can determine your payback period of 3.375 years. So now that we've talked about how we can go about calculating the payback period, let's talk about uh, some of the advantages of using the payback period as a way to evaluate investments. And the major advantage of using the payback period is that it is simple. It's simple, it's quick, and it is easy to communicate and comprehend. So when somebody comes out to you and says, oh, well, this investment is a payback period of 3.5 years or four years, you kind of know what they're saying almost right off the bat. You don't need a whole lot of finance background to understand what they're saying, as opposed to, oh, the NPV of this project is $3.5 million. Uh, I don't know what NPV is because I'm not a finance major, right? And so you don't need a discount rate or all that uh, to calculate payback period. It's uh, rather easy to communicate and it's simple to do as well as we've seen. The math is not that hard. The other uh, major advantage of using the payback method is that it is by definition uh, geared towards those projects which are rather liquid, which generate cash flow faster. And so this may be particularly beneficial for young firms which have a lot of growth opportunities or investment opportunities but are strapped for cash. In other words, they don't have a lot of access to like bank loans or other forms of external finance. And so these firms may then prefer to not invest in those projects which will eat up a lot of cash today and then generate cash flows way out into the future. I mean, it's possible that those projects may very well be good projects, but if you're waiting too long, then uh, those projects might be uh, not as beneficial for these young firms because they're already strapped for cash. And so these firms may then prefer to go for those projects which have a quicker payback so that they can invest, recover their initial investment, and then go for other projects. Uh, and so that's why payback period is particularly beneficial for those firms. So those are the two major advantages of using the payback period as a way to evaluate investments. That said, the payback period does have some major shortcomings. The first one being that the acceptance criteria for projects is very subjective. In other words, when we figure out that the payback period for a particular project is four years, should we accept it or reject it? Well, as we've talked about it before, that kind of depends on what your desired cutoff is. If your desired cutoff is three years, in other words, you want your projects to pay you back in three years or less, you'll say, no, I don't want to invest in this project. Whereas if your desired cutoff is say five years, then you'll say, okay, yeah, I'll go ahead with this project because it's paying me back sooner. But how do you decide whether this is three years or five years? In other words, you could have the exact same project being looked at by two managers, and yet the two managers could come up with very different decisions based on whether their acceptance criteria is three years or five years. And so the point is that because this criteria is subjective, it's not clear uh, whether a project should be accepted or not. At least you can't say that objectively across all projects or all managers. So that's the first major uh, a disadvantage of payback period. Uh, in contrast, for example, NPV is very clear. If the project has positive NPV, go for it. Negative NPV, don't do it. So that's one. The second, perhaps the most important, is that payback period ignores time value of money. What I mean by that is that if you go back and take a look at this timeline, what we were doing is that we were adding up these 20,000, 20,000, and 30,000, sort of lumping them all together. And we know uh, that time value of money teaches us that we should never, ever, ever add up cash flows that are occurring at different points in time because cash flows that are occurring sooner are more valuable, but payback period ignores that. Now, that said, uh, there is something called the discounted payback period, which does account for this, uh, which I'll talk about in a separate video. Nonetheless, the payback period as it is uh, does have this problem. 
the final uh, major problem with uh, with payback period is that it kind of ignores those cash flows that occur after the cutoff or your desired uh, payback period, which means that you could very well end up rejecting good projects which uh, which might be positive NPV. Let me illustrate using this timeline that you've seen before. Let's suppose that for some reason uh, your desired cutoff is three years. In other words, you want your projects to pay you back in three years or less. Well, we have seen that the actual payback for this project is four years uh, because it pays you back in four years exactly. So if you were a manager looking at this project, you'd be like, no, I don't want to do this investment because I don't get paid back in three years. Well, what if in years four your cash flows was your cash flow was not thirty thousand, but say three hundred thousand? And similarly in year five, what if your cash flow was not thirty thousand, but maybe five hundred thousand dollars? Now, if you look at this investment as a whole, you might say, well, this is a darn good investment, right? Because I'm getting a whole lot of cash flow after year three. This is when the project maybe matures or something. But because the project did not really pay you back in three years or less, implementing the payback period by itself would say, no, don't do this. And so that's another major disadvantage of payback period is that you're kind of ignoring all these large cash flows that are occurring after your cutoff period. Uh, in reality, most managers will sort of look at this and say, well, maybe we want to look at other uh, investment evaluation techniques like like NPV or IRR. So this is sort of exaggerated. Uh, nonetheless, uh, if you implement the payback period right as it is, then this is a major drawback that you end up ignoring cash flows that are occurring after the cutoff period. And so this then sums up our discussion on calculating payback period and also on what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of using the payback period as a way to evaluate investments.